I feel like you can say you were born ready, but you don't even look ready in the slightest. <laughs> what does that even mean? I was born ready. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's bollocks, isn't it? Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. You're listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode... 94. Ni- episode 94 wow. of a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. My name's Daniel. This is Sophie. Say hello, Sophie. Hello, Sophie. And uh, this is, once again, another very special episode of Hangover You Don't Deserve. We're celebrating two years as a podcast, and we're doing so by watching and reviewing the Twilight movies. Why, we don't know. We can't remember. We were drunk when we decided to do it. I think it was a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone told me at the time that they that there are 10 hours of it. <laughs> Nobody mentioned that to me. Oh. Uh, so before we dive into Twilight Eclipse, uh, let's just quickly say thank you to everybody who supports us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash ahyddpod. That's the place where you can support the show. Uh, if you took us a few quid each month, you can get digital or physical exclusives in return. And as such, we want to say a very special thank you to Adria Bowman and Jared Spear for their long-term continued support since the beginning of the show. And now we can move on to uh, the good shit, Twilight Eclipse. Twilight Eclipse came out in 2010. Okay, another. So, so we've had we've had a Twilight movie every year now: 2008, 2009, 2010. Oh wow! Let me tell you how this one's different. They didn't even leave a year this time. This one came out six months after the last one. Six no way. Months. Did they film them side by side? They must have done. They must yeah. have done. But even if they did, who needs who needs the fix that quick? You you're overdosing people on Twilight. I don't think that's possible. Right. Okay. Well, there's an opinion. <laughs> you're the one who just described it as what did you say? The good shit. The good shit. <laughs> that was sarcasm. I see. So budget for this one sixty eight million. Ooh, right now, that's like double almost. Yeah, last. double the first one. So. So they're on to the third movie. So at this point, and they're churning them out. So at this point, they know they're a success, but for some reason, they aren't big budget yet. They aren't. Yeah, that's they aren't true. spending a fortune on these things. And given how much of the movie seems to be shot in mountainous regions here, that you'd think that that would cost a lot of money. Helicopter shots and things like that. Yeah, but then maybe it's cheaper than like building a set. Maybe. Now, what I would say is it did feel like they spent more on it, this one. Yeah. I think it felt more like a real movie. The first one felt like a, a media studies project. This <laughs> one really felt like a movie. I think uh, the director's changed as well. Ah. It's probably no. to do that. That makes a lot of sense. It was like a grown-up who did this one. <laughs> <laughs> this person is qualified already. Yeah. So the 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 first scene it it starts in some kind of rainy chase scene, right? Mm-hmm. Some guy that we've never seen before. Yeah, to just it, all strangers, and I hate. I hate, I hate that. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't come to see this. <laughs> I came to see. Show me the big gun. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the this is the thing. It starts. You're looking at characters you don't care about, you don't know about. So already, you just your attention drops. If you if you're anything like me, yeah. you're just like, well, I don't care about this because I don't know who they are. Yeah. I, I know that later I will find out. There will be context later, but I'm sorry, you, you've already lost me. Yeah. This doesn't. This is this is not anything that makes sense to me right now. But also the 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 mood for me, I thought immediately this one feels shitter than the others. But it did improve. But that opening scene, I was like, "Oh, this is garbage." <laughs> then, then the opening, the uh, the opening scene also had like a a shit horror movie vibe, didn't it? Yes, yeah, too dark. You couldn't see anything that was going on, mm-hmm. and it was raining so heavily, heavier than it ever rains in real life. And then the opening credit thing comes on that says "Eclipse," and there's there's an uh, like an eclipse happening. And that's the first time that it's occurred to me that they're all named after, like, phases of the moon. Oh, uh, did you not realise No, that no. And I knew all the names of them, but I, I, that just hadn't dawned on me. Well, it's not really... Breaking dawned on me. Oh, uh, nice. It's not what? 
Yeah, it's not all faces of the moon, but it's all about like yeah, well, you know, nighttime. Now we open, we open the real movie when we see that we see our, our guys, the guys we know. <laughs> we open the real movie back in the field that they're always in, the field that Gran was in last time. The field that they go to for every discussion. Yeah, well, so so they had they had uh, bad serious conversations in the woodland. Good, serious conversations in the field. Ah, uh, I see. I thought that was the same place, just like in spring. I think it's the same place, but it's just an opening in the woodland. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's symbolic. Like, we're not going to stand. We're going to be out in the open about this. In the this. clearing, yeah. yeah. In the clearing. Good word. Mm. He's shimmering in the sun, as he does. And he just <laughs> looks sweaty. <laughs> he looks like he's got beads of sweat all over his neck. It's disgusting. Mm. It doesn't it's, look good. I always thought uh, that the the sparkly skin thing, they just didn't do enough with it. Like, everything else is so over the top and dramatic. Yeah. But that one thing, like, oh, I can't go out in sunlight because people think I'm a freak or whatever. You barely notice it, honestly. And, and I think it's because they didn't want to have to really write around it a lot because they don't utilize it at any point in the movie so far yeah know. that's true it's not really like a big deal is it no well except when he yeah no so they're, they're they're talking about their marriage because if you've listened to the previous episode or if you've seen the previous twilight movie you will know that the the final scene is marry me bella <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so <laughs> You know what? There was a bit less of that in this one, I think. Yeah, she, she got it together a bit. Started to maybe she just had a really bad cold. Maybe it was the director thing again. Yeah. Well, oh. maybe the director was like, "Sorry, sorry, I, sorry, excuse me." Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, Kristen, <laughs> is it Kirsten? Kristen? Crystal? Kirsten. Right. Okay. <laughs> what is that noise you're making? Is that? Are you? Is it, do you have allergies? Is it mm. allergy season? Is it being in the field? Is that what's doing it? We can. We can. CGI a field underneath your body, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, no, no, it was a character choice. Oh, okay, well, let's drop that. Mm. Let's say you grew out of that since the last movie. So they're talking about their marriage, right? I want to know who in the fuck performs the ceremony when a vampire marries a human. <laughs> well. Is a vampire allowed in a church? It seems like that would not be allowed. Yeah, see, that's a, something that they don't ever mention, and you brought that up and I think that's a good point like would they burn would they just would the skin just start glittering if they were yeah, in a church isn't, like, that, isn't that like a thing like if you show a vampire a crucifix it starts to like it's, it's skin burns yeah oh yeah and but the same with when he just comes into a house all the time and traditionally yeah you have to be invited in if you're a vampire yeah so the kind of it's not very like um true to the law is it yeah <laughs> what was she thinking, this Stephanie Meyer? Is that what her name? Meyer, I don't know. Stephanie John Meyer. What was she thinking when she started writing a book about vampires and didn't know anything about vampires? <laughs> why, why did she do that? What was she? What? What? Why did she think that was a good idea? <laughs> so they chat about the marriage for a little while. Then she goes back home. It turns out Jacob's depressed, right? Mm-hmm. And... The, uh, her dad tells her, a dad who she exclusively refers to as Charlie, even though they seem to have a very good bond and relationship, tells her, you know, you 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 really should go over there and be there for him because when you were depressed last year, he was there for you, which is a very good point. Charlie's a good man. Yeah. Uh, but she can't get in touch with him. He won't answer any of her calls, right? That's the deal. And uh, he shows up at their school for some reason. Yes. And she's like... Why haven't you been answering my calls? And he he says he had nothing to say. I have nothing to say. And then so, she, like, every line in the movie is some dramatic stupidness like that, isn't it? Yeah, I have nothing to say. It's too angsty. It's too <laughs> yeah. Angsty is a perfect word for it. And then for some reason she just gets on the back of his bike. Yeah. So he's like, I don't want to talk to you. And then to piss off Edward she, because Edward's saying like, don't go near him. He's you dangerous. Know, he's, a, he's a werewolf. He's a monster. You know. Uh, <laughs> So, so she, but she goes and gets on the back of his bike and just rides away with him. Which... In in front of the whole fucking school. Like, she just walks away from her boyfriend and gets on the back of his hunk's bike. Yep. Like, that's so embarrassing for Edward. And Jacob's stoked about it, even though he just said he didn't want to talk to her. Yeah, he's very smug about that. And, I mean, it, that that's one of the 
many times that it comes up, but one of the first real instances of how controlling Edward is. Very yeah, controlling. Th- this whole movie was just Edward being controlling and Jacob being a bit of a dick. Both of them act like Bella's some sort of like toy that they want. They're like, that's mine. And then she's just in the middle going, she's, oh, please, please don't fight. Yeah, she's not, she's not like... I love both of you. Using her voice to say, well, I would prefer this, to be honest, so, you know. Yeah, like... Off your fuck, mate. Like, <laughs> that's it, we're done. Um, so this is the point where, again, this happens a lot, but the first real signs of they can just change the science, the the physiological elements of their powers as the movie goes on to whatever fits the story, right? So so one of the things that it's not exactly a change of the way their powers work, but Alice can see the future. We know that. Edward can read minds, but Edward can read Alice's mind. So if she sees the future and he reads her mind, he sees the future. So really he can do that as well. No, but that was mentioned in the other film. Right, okay. Okay. I just don't think it was right. It's... So you're in your yeah, I, you kinda of right in that you technically he can also see the future. If he stood near enough to her. Yeah, but, but he doesn't have to be stood near to her. Well later on that becomes <sighs> becomes evident. And then at the same time here, we learn out of nowhere, and the way, <laughs> the way that they describe it is like we should have all already known. He says to Bella, uh, sorry, uh, Jacob says to Bella, wolf telepathy, remember? <laughs> As if they've already talked about that when they hadn't. Yeah, I'm fairly sure that was never mentioned yeah. before. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, well, when the fuck did this come up in any of the previous movies? Uh, wolf telepathy, remember? So they're just gaslighting the audience into yeah. thinking that they'd already told us about yeah. it. Oh, we forgot to put that scene in the last movie, so we're just gonna act like you should have known already. Yeah, and there was another scene where Bella found a note in it or she was looking at a note that she already had or something from Jacob that was just you couldn't even read it because it was too dark and it didn't stop yeah. on that on the like scene for long enough. And it was just never mentioned where it came from or what it was about. Yeah, never mentioned before or since. It was just she just looked at the, this note and they, that was it. They may as well have just put like a black card on the screen that said nostalgia. <laughs> it, it, ridiculous. Uh, then again, we kind of see an embellishment of of what we've known about them so far. In that Edward goes in Bella's house, and he immediately goes. Someone's been here. Like, it, 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 yeah, there's people in here right now. Is that is that a thing he's been able to do the whole time? Like, I think it's just his strong sense of smell. Yeah, well, I don't. I did, it felt too easy. Yeah. Right. But anyway, he's he he walks in her bedroom and he can smell that another person's been there. That's the worst kind of boyfriend in the world. That he walks <laughs> in and he's just like, "Who the fuck has been in your room?" No. Yeah, he wasn't like accusing her. No, I know, but still, she goes to spend more time with Jacob, uh, and the way that Edward communicates his disapproval with that situation is that he does like an aggressive U-turn in the road and drives off quickly in what I assume is a Volvo, but we don't see the Volvo logo, so it lost the sponsorship. Yeah, no more product placement. That's quite childish behavior, really, isn't it? Yeah, but most of everything they do is... And he's 100 years old, so what's his fucking excuse? Yeah. With, and, and again, that's not something they've, so far at least, and I don't think they're going to, They've not, so, not something they've really explained. Like, does he have the brain of a 17-year-old, even though he's 109? Does he have the maturity of a 17-year-old? They're not really going into that. Like, Yeah, they just... What is he? That's a very toxic age gap. Mm. It seems inappropriate. Like... Yeah, it's 18 and 109. But he's actually seventeen, so I don't. Right. I just don't get it. Yeah. He has all that life experience that she doesn't have. Yeah, and and that doesn't come up much, does it? No. Like he's lived through one hundred years of society evolving, and he just never mentions any of it. Mm-hmm. He's never like, by the way, I saw the Beatles live. You know, he never <laughs> he never talks about any of it. Well, she wouldn't be interested in the Beatles because she's not like other girls. She likes classical music. So. <laughs> yeah, that that that's. That's briefly mentioned for a second in one of them as well. And then they just never listen to music again. <laughs> that was her one interest that she had. Yeah, that she, she is not a fleshed out character at all. She's just 
she's nothing. It's, she's it's, just like yeah. a pawn in Edwards yeah. and Jacob's game. Yeah, all she has is being in love with the vampire and the werewolf. That's her deal. Mm. She doesn't have any hobbies, does she? No, she doesn't do anything. She goes to school and then she spends time with Edward and Jacob. Lying in a field. In the in the field. In the field in the wood. So they 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 go off together, her and her and Jacob, and he says Oh, you're gonna hear the all the stories of the like the tribe, mm-hmm. all the all the F one's origin stories or whatever. And she's like, Well well wait, why why me? I thought it was a secret. And he's you like, already fucking know? Yeah. Uh, but then he, he his 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 justification for that is even worse. He's just like, We're all in this together. We all play a part. What? She <laughs> isn't one of you. She isn't a wolf. <laughs> and what are you talking about? Well, you know, that's by the by, that's how they led us to her learning about the tribes, which we needed to know as the audience, so that's that's how they wrote this in. But my takeaway was why won't they put on shirts? <laughs> Why do they just never wear shirts? See, I think this is addressed in the book, so maybe because I've read the books, uh, that's I just didn't question it because the way the vampires are really cold, the werewolves are apparently really hot, so I guess they just don't need to wear shirts, but they wear shorts for you know like public decency. Right. Okay. I see. But then when they're wolves, they they take the they're naked anyway. Yeah, actually, see, it never, it never in the yeah in the film they just turn into a wolf and their clothes just disappear. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So so they learn about the the tribe's history and they the tribe the the, the wolves discovered vampires. Mm-hmm. Well, they discovered one vampire. They didn't know what it was. They killed it. And then the vampire They'd never be I don't think they'd been wolves before that. Or I'd, or I do. I don't know if that was I kind of I don't know. So <laughs> it wasn't clear. <laughs> wasn't no. So the vampire's wife, who's also a vampire, comes after them. She's very upset that they killed her husband. So she attacks the whole Fair. tribe. And there's only one wolf left because it's this is the point where it's kind of documented that the wolves can marry the humans and it not ever be a problem because the like old tribe leader, he goes, he's the only wolf left. He goes to attack the vampire. And to save him, his his wife, who they refer to as... His third wife. And <laughs> Inexplicably. Yeah, just, why, they why, n- never explain that. Why is that relevant? No. Is, is, is she a third wife at once? Or did his other wives yeah. die of something? Well, so then, within seconds, they are now referring to her as the third wife. The third wife did this. Like, <laughs> is, is that representative of something? And again, maybe more is covered in the book, or maybe that's something... That like, like something if, that we're not... Yeah, getting. if you knew American history, you might know more about it. I don't, I don't know, but... Anyway, she distracts the vampire by making herself bleed, and the way she does that is stabs herself in the stomach, which seems completely unnecessary. She could have cut any part of her body to make herself bleed. That's overkill. Maybe she didn't like being his wife. That's why <laughs> she did that. It was just suicide, and they misinterpreted it as like an act of bravery. Yeah, and... a, a martyrdom. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the history of the tribes now. Now we know why they hate the vampires. We know, we know how it works. But again, you can still wear shirts, and you, you did in all of the cutscenes. All the old people are all wearing shirts. It's just, it's just the strapping young men that don't wear shirts. Yeah, it's just all the lads who have a six pack. They're not going to wear shirts. Lads, lads, lads. The, we we see there's an ongoing d- vampire disruption in Seattle. That uh, the only time this has been mentioned so far is Edward saying, "We're monitoring the situation in Seattle." As if he's like a member of the CIA. <laughs> a team is monitoring the situation in Seattle. And then we see a clip from from Seattle on the news of a like a mass murder that's taken place. And we see, we look at the, the vampires committing the mass murder. And again, with the changing physical elements of, of all of this, we see for the first time that when the vampire hits someone in the head, their head shatters, just shatters like a, a glass bowl. The, the vampire's head. Well, it's at this point, it's not. It, yeah. It's not explained that they're vampires that are fighting. Yeah. That's... He just hits someone, and his head just shatters with no explanation whatsoever. It doesn't have any blood inside it. It's just like he was a vase that they broke. <laughs> no explanation for that. They they then the Cullens gather. 
because it turns out that someone is creating an army of vampires and they worked that out. They, they used like deductive reasoning to figure that out. They didn't, nobody told them that they're just like, well, it's like a lot of, a lot of attacks. It has to be more than one of them, but they must be newborns. So yeah, must be an army. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's how they worked that out. Um, they, they, they call this like gathering at the party that they're throwing. And so they're just kind of in, in plain sight of the party, having a very serious discussion about vampire armies, um, even though the whole high school was there. And then Bella, who throughout all of the movies has just acted like she's an expert on vampires, Bella was just like, <laughs> vampire army, as if she knows anything. <laughs> why, why are you acting like that's ridiculous? You don't know anything about vampires at all. You've been here a minute. You have no clue. Yeah, she acts really uh, patronising to most people throughout the whole thing. Yeah, every, she acts like she knows everything about werewolves. So then at this point, Jacob walks in or walks over to the group because they're just in the middle of a party and he's like, what's going on? <laughs> you all look very serious. What's happening? So they, they loop him in and they basically agree we're going to form a pact with a truce with the wolves, which they already have, but this time they're going to fight together. Mm -hmm. Right? Bella then tells Jacob... You don't know what you're getting yourself in for. Sorry, Bella, but of every person in this room, you're the only one who's not literally a monster. You are a human. You don't know what you're getting yourself in Yeah, for. you can't handle anything right now. Very annoying. So that's, that's like plan hatched. They need to go and train is the plan. They're all going to train the wolves on how to fight vampires. Which... <laughs> Even though that's literally why the wolves exist. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. They already fight vampires. Like... That's why you need a truce, because they could kill you. That's the point. <laughs> but then they're like, no, we'll teach you how to fight the vampires. Okay, whatever. Then later that night, she's lying in bed with Edward. She's talking about how like, how difficult it's going to be, what she's going to tell everyone when she turns to a vampire, because that's what she wants to happen. And, uh, and he doesn't want her to do it. So he's just like, well, you know, in a few years, everyone you know will be dead. Problem solved. <laughs> brutal. Absolutely yeah, brutal. Yeah, but he doesn't want us to do it, so he's trying to be brutal. Like, yeah. oh, like you're not thinking, which she's not. She's an idiot. She's like 18 and she's like, I know what I want for the rest of my life. Like, I'm sorry, but no, you don't. Yeah. You're yeah. a child. <clears throat> you have one boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to die for him. Yeah. Literally die for him. So she spends a little bit more time with Jacob. Because she feels sorry for him or whatever it is. Pity, pity hangs, right? <laughs> and he, they, they're walking, they're walking along a lake, right? It's very cheery, colourful, green, romantic. Mm -hmm. He's shirtless, of course. And then he kisses her, which she didn't ask for. Oh. So she punches him in the face. But he's a werewolf, so she breaks her hand. <laughs> But that was a that was a pretty fucking outlandish punch in the face. I think I know that she, I know that he shouldn't have kissed her, but she like full on fucking punched him square in the mouth. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure where I stand it's on not, that. It's not. It's not like it was like, like okay, hugely okay. violent reaction. Let's consider the second scene of the first movie that a stranger on her first day of school just kisses her and runs away. She does nothing. <laughs> This this guy oh, yeah, that's true. This guy that she's been leading on for literally years <laughs> misinterprets the situation and kisses her and she fucking clocks him square in the jaw. <laughs> See, she's a bitch. She is. It's 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 terrible. But do you think this is my main question about the whole movie franchise now? Do you think she learned how to face punch like that while watching Face Punch? <laughs> I hope so. Overall, here's my takeaway in general about about her situation, problem, whatever you want to call it, that she's in love with both of them and they both love her. Terrible. <laughs> Why not fuck the werewolf all your life and then when you're like, oh, I'll probably die within the next 10, 20, 30 years, then become a vampire then. Right? You Get to like retirement age, become a vampire, then you can be with Cullen for, forever because mm -hmm. he's eternal life so so he's like 109 he won't be, be bothered that you're 60 that's true that's that's my stance but it does it's, it does highlight another point 
And that's that you could never hate fuck Jacob because if he got angry while fucking you, oh. he would turn into a werewolf. It would turn into bestiality really quick. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they're, they're big wolves. Like, yeah. they'd probably just fucking tear her in half, right? <laughs> That's gross. That's so gross. But um, no, you're right. That's a scientific fact. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry that science is gross. <laughs> yeah, I'm being really... I unsure. guess you can take it up with God. Oh, my God. Speaking of, we find out in this one, Edward's, like, really religious. Or he's, like, really, like... Old fashioned. He's old school. Yeah. So he's like, he thinks he's got no soul because he's a vampire, and he like he wants to like preserve Bella's soul. That's why he doesn't want us to change. And what was the other? He want he's he's worried about. He doesn't want to like have sex before marriage because um, something about her like virtue or something. Yeah, virtue. Like he's fuck a, off, mate. He's he's not grown at all in these hundred years has he yeah he, he's yeah well you know maybe he does just have the maturity of a 17 year old yeah he's like gatekeeping her virginity yeah it's weird it's weird and he says something about asking charlie for permission which is just that's offensive I think. oh yeah asking for permission to to marry her marry her like that's not your decision so we see at this point that the army of vampires is being watched by the Italians from the last movie. The, yes. The vit- yes. Vittori or v- whatever. Volturi. Yeah. Volturi. Yeah. Well, that's not a word. I'm sure it probably is. And they're like overseeing it and deciding should they step in or whatever. Yeah. And there's a bit of dialogue in that that scene that really made me realise the, the problem with a lot of it is it's written like a Dickensian novel, the dialogue. It's like the dialogue is so poor and it, it's you can never really place what era the movie feels like it's from because the music feels very eighties. A lot of the like high school stuff seems very eighties, but then it feels really, really old because they're old. And so they 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 say things in an old fashioned way. And he says Dakota Fanning is is talking about how we can't let the boss decide because they're monitoring his decisions. Alice is monitoring his decisions, and then the brother says. Then decide, sister. It's time. What? <laughs> just, you, no, you just say, well, you'll have to do it then. That's how you would word that. Yeah. That's how a person would word that. Also, like, I hate that thing that they do in films, and I understand it, but where they'll say, like, hello, sister. Who does that? Yes. Actually, like, I do know one guy who does that. By the way, we are brother and sister. <laughs> just to let everyone know. Just to let you know, sister, that I am your brother. <laughs> So, so they they kind of figure out right the the Italians are are coming with this. That's part of it. Yeah. They're on the way. They're pissed off. Right. They get together. They hatch this plan. Vampires, wolves, going to fight together. Bella shows up for the first time that that Edward and Jacob have got to work together. She shows up wearing an engagement gift bracelet that Jacob Gra- made her graduation. Gra- sorry, yeah, graduation gift bracelet that Jacob made her. That has a wolf on it. She's wearing it. She's wearing a wolf bracelet, and he is a wolf. She may as well be wearing a bracelet with with Taylor Lautner's face on it. It's ridiculous, and and Edward's like pissed off about it, which is probably one of the only times where I think is him being annoyed is reasonable. Yeah, right. And that just it feels like she's antagonizing him, and that feels like the the thing through the whole movie is like yeah, she, she really plays them off each other. She's just like. Ping ponging between the both of Ping ponging. I can't think of words. And then, uh, yes, it's like she can't decide. And she's like, oh, well, it's just so hard because I love them both. Like, okay, but you're putting them both through like misery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go into training, right? Preparing to fight the soldiers, the, the army of vampires. And Jasper suddenly, <laughs> suddenly has a terrible Texan accent. And then says, "Oh, I was a, I was a <laughs> Confederate soldier, or something." Yeah, I was a soldier in Texas during the Civil War. Like it, at no point has this Texan accent been clear through any of the rest of the movie. But now that he needs to say he was from Texas, now they need to give him a backstory. He's just talking in this terrible, like Southern accent. 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite just, bad. It, every every bit of the movie feels like they just wrote it on the spot to just further the plot at that point. But that's funny because it's based I, on a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like they read the book on set while filming. <laughs> like right. Oh shit! It says it says here that you were born in Texas. Just start doing the accent from now. Okay. <laughs> Nobody will notice. <laughs> Bella then has a nightmare, as is tradition, and sees Victoria, who is the one of the bad guy vampires from the first and second movie, sees her commanding the soldiers, commanding the army, and then wakes up and tells Edward, like, they're all victorious. That's She's, they're all her puppets. She's controlling them. So what now? Her nightmares are visions now. <laughs> she, this this person's human. But to further the plot of the movie, she needs to know. She needs to be to be able to see in her dream. Oh, it was Victoria. Then she tells them, and then they know that it's Victoria. Yeah, what they could have found out a more believable way. Yeah, they could. They, they all have superpowers. Yeah. they could have just easily. Oh, I just checked, and uh. Victoria's decision making because <laughs> I can I can monitor decision making so yeah I just checked yeah it's it's so stupid <sighs> then there's f- out of nowhere and for no for no real reason because it doesn't benefit the movie in any way she has a talk about sex with her dad oh oh no it's so awkward the worst scene yeah and they're awkward about it and she's like don't try and have the talk with me dad it's it's awful and it doesn't there's no reason for it to be there. It doesn't advance the movie in any way other than she tells her dad, I'm a virgin dad, okay? Like, storms off. Like, you got that virgin dad. Jeez. <laughs> like, she could have worded that way less awkwardly, yeah. I think. Because that... they obviously hated the conversation. It wasn't like an open conversation, like, where they're really close and they can talk about things like that. It was, it was like, she could have just said, like, oh, you know, nothing's happened. Yeah. Or some something that's not... I'm a virgin dad. Yeah. <laughs> that's just horrible. Yeah, it's it, yeah. That's that's when you said it was clear that this was written by a Mormon. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's or because because don't, between between don't some Mormons have numerous wives. Maybe that's why the third wife thing was yeah, written. Yeah, I don't know a lot about that, but Me neither. But it's clear that it was written by a religious person anyway is the point because yeah. because both Edward and Charlie are really hammering home the like you got to be careful, and you got to do this and that and all that stuff. The, so the big plan, their big plan for when the army arrive is she's going to spend the night at Edward's house while the rest of the family go hunting to practice. And Bella is staying at Edward's, and Alice actually says to her, like, you'll have the place to yourselves tonight. You're welcome. Which is weird. That's weird. But then Bella wants to fuck. Edward doesn't because of all the virtue stuff, right? But he buys her a bed because he doesn't sleep, so he doesn't have a bed. He buys her a bed, and it's this insane, like, four-poster thing, right? And she, she, her response is, an air mattress would have sufficed. Fuck off, they're rich. Yeah. Why would you, why would she be like, why would she, if, if he'd bought an air mattress, would she not have thought, you fucking cheap cunt? Yeah, tight bastard. Like, you are, you you live in this, you have no reason to have earthly possessions, but you live in this insane house. You have all of this stuff, but you've gone the Argos and got an air mattress for me to stay over. Just because you don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, I was being so pissed off if that's happened. And that made me think, with the fact that, the fact that they don't sleep, how bored must vampires be? Yeah. He's been alive for 109 years and day and night. He doesn't even need to sleep. Does he ever just like lie down and stop thinking? Yeah, well, well yeah. And if he doesn't need to sleep, does that mean his body doesn't get tired in any way? Does he ever have to sit down or could he Maybe if he hasn't drank blood for a while, he'll get tired. Right, maybe. But again, oh, we we we're having to fill in the blanks here because the movie doesn't explain anything. Mm-hmm. And you can't you can't just go off g- general vampire law because they haven't followed any of it. So no way, no way. Mm-hmm. Uh, what next? What next? Oh, that was when he gave her the ring as well because he 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 kind of already mentioned marriage, obviously, and asked her, but he was like, "Oh, I." He, he he starts out with this whole spiel about like if I'd met you back yes. then, like when he was when he was seventeen, like if I'd met you back then, we would have courted. So which and that was in like. 
what, 1918 or something. Yeah. And um, he's like, yeah, we would have had, like, chaperone dates and walks in the park. and Drank, sh- drank iced tea on the promenade. <laughs> no, it was iced tea on the porch or something. Right. Like, they can't do that now. Yeah. No, they don't make it. Because he doesn't he's, drink. He's like, they don't make it like they used to. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I would have done this. I would have got down on my knee and presented you with a ring. And then he gets this ring out and it's so ugly. It's it's disgusting. It's it's not an engagement ring. It's, it's like costume jewelry. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. <laughs> It's, it's huge. And not, not it, in like an engagement ring. No, it's not, like, it's not like, it's not like, wow, look at the size of that rock. It's like, it looks like. <laughs> it's like a disc. A turtle shell. It's <laughs> it's just a big black oval. And right as she was probably about to go, are you, are you making a joke? He was like, this was my mother's. <laughs> so she has to now be like, oh, it's wear lovely. It. <laughs> we were laughing when, when that happened. Aisha said. <laughs> If you gave me a ring like that, I'd eat it so I'd never have to see it again. I don't I don't know why you wouldn't just throw it away. <laughs> it seems over the top. I guess she's greedy. <laughs> Rude. Um Well no, because she says if you put it in like a cake or something. She'd just pretend right, that you hadn't seen she hadn't seen it. If I was if I was trying to propose um by by sneaking it in a cake, I've never understood why people do stuff like that. Like, why why have you put it in the bottom of the champagne? Now I don't want to drink the champagne. And what if I didn't see it and choked and died? Yeah, <laughs> has that ever happened? People choke on the engagement ring. It must have done. Yeah, surely must have done. Plus, I think some people don't look at the food as they're eating it either. No, I I absolutely don't. This is a this is a thing like that I say to Aisha all the time because we we order food a lot and Aisha is like Aisha's really grossed out by hair and is frequently finding hair in food that we order. Like it's it's a common problem. And I never ever do. And I think it's... I'm just eating that hair because yeah, I'm you... not looking. I'm not paying attention, so I'm just scoffing down that hair. You definitely but... that's what it is. <laughs> the first suggestion. That's in your history. Oh. Sophie's already <laughs> looked this up before. <laughs> Sophie's already Googled has anyone ever choked on an engagement ring? <laughs> A woman was choked to death in Minneapolis after eating the cake in which she'd hidden a costly a costly ring. Why do they have to add that part? That seems like insensitive. Because it makes the guy seem even stupider. Because he wrapped a fucking expensive engagement ring in chocolate cake. It was chocolate cake. And it was worth sixty five thousand dollars. Fuck off. He paid sixty five thousand dollars to kill his wife. <laughs> well it's... Do you think he could get a refund? Cut, cut it out of her and uh... surely they would take it out of her and do you think he just rinsed it off and took it back to the store I've changed my mind <laughs> seven, May- seven day return policy maybe he um he took it out and put it on a finger what and buried her with it yeah expensive funeral although that would be rude because she didn't technically accept the proposal <laughs> she didn't even know it was happening maybe she said yes with a dying breath so is this the only case ever I mean this was the first one that came up Oh shit! Involuntary manslaughter. He what? He was sentenced for it. No, it's saying he was arrested and accused of it, but it doesn't say whether he. For fuck's sake! What? I mean, any reason to put that man through that? Apparently, she's the third woman in the U.S. to die. I thought you were going to say the third woman he'd done that to. I was like, right, well, no, fair enough then. (laughs) Third woman in the U.S. Okay, so it's not that many. Oh, wait, no, but that's completely different. Oh, it's saying third woman to die in this manner as a consequence of a stupid wedding proposal. So apparently the another one was a woman died fallen from a 23-story building seconds after being proposed to, and they concluded that that was suicide, but that's, I don't know, that seems sketchy. No one kills themselves to get out of an awkward situation. Yeah. There's no way anyone has ever done that. A woman's eyes of a heart attack after he decided to compliment his proposal with surprise fireworks. Oof. Grim. I would never, ever, ever live that down. Never forgive myself for that. No, I'd, you'd probably kill yourself, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, that's traumatic. So... To get back to, <laughs> to get back to Twilight, we're missing the point here. 
their big plan, their big fight plan, after after Bella and Edward have, have spent the night, the next day, they are all going to gather in the field, and Edward and Bella are going to go and stay on a campsite in the rural mountainous area that's just next to the field, for some reason. <laughs> and they're going to cover the trail, because the, the vampires will be able to track a scent. They're going to cover the trail by Jacob carrying her there, because the vampires can't smell her scent over the stink of a werewolf, right? Mm-hmm. But to carry her, he uses his arms, he uses his big, strong, shirtless arms, and runs. But he can only run the speed of a human when he's a human, and he's carrying someone else, and he's running up a mountain. Yeah. So that would have been really slow and tiring. He could have turned into a wolf and let her ride him up the mountain. <laughs> I'm sure he would have loved that. I think, yeah, that would have been more fun, but maybe they just didn't want to bother with the CGI of that scene. They could have inferred it. Yeah. They could have just said, right, here's what we're going to do. Okay, there we go. That's what we're going to do. And then you just assume it happens. <laughs> but anyway, he takes her up there. Edward hikes up there on his own so that the scent is, is covered and all of that. And they're in a tent in the mountains. It's freezing cold. And here is a major plot point. If they were covering the scent so that they couldn't track Bella, why didn't he just take her to a hotel? He could have taken her anywhere. (laughs) He didn't have to be right next to where the battle was happening. He could have been further away than that. Yeah, I don't know. Why don't we we, uh, make sure the scent is lost all the way to this luxury B&B? Why didn't you just go to the Cullen's house? Yeah, they could could have just stayed there. The whole thing is, is four plot holes. So they're in the tent and it's freezing cold and Edward's like, is there anything I could do? Because obviously he's ice cold, so he can't like help her warm up in any way. Yeah. Right. And then Jacob, who it was not made clear, is camping on the mountain with them. That was not mentioned at all. No, they did mention that, but I can't remember why. Well, there was no other tent, so it's, I guess he wouldn't have needed it, it, a tent. It was like a little house. Right. Okay. Okay. So he just pops in the tent. And says, I can't sleep with all the teeth chattering. Which, I mean, bullshit, right? <laughs> You've clearly heard what's going on. And you're like, well, guess who's got a hot bod? I'm going to take my hot bod in there. <laughs> so he, he goes in and he's like, let me warm you up. Edward doesn't want a hot boy touching her. So he's like, get your hands off her. <laughs> well, but the, but, the, but the way the actual scene plays out is he grabs hold of Jacob. Jacob says, get your hands off me. And he says, get your hands off her. It's like a Chuckle Brothers episode. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, and he basically talks him into it. He's like, listen. She's going to get sick yeah, and go- it'll be your fault. Your girl's, your girl's going to get hypothermia, right? Just because you're being a pathetic, toxic man about it. Yeah. Right? Now, I, I totally agree. Until he crawls into the <laughs> sleeping bag with her and then suggests that she takes off her clothes because she'll warm up faster. Although he's right, that is a survival thing because okay. it's the body heat you but need to be like in contact. I think he I think he's taking it too far, right? Because he is he's burning hot at all times. I don't think I think she'll be all right once he's in the sleeping bag with her. Yeah, that's true. He's he's definitely taking it too far. Like he can sense that Edward is the type of guy who would be pissed off if like his wife saw a male doctor. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, well, he shouldn't. He shouldn't be in the presence. She shouldn't be in the presence of other men. Probably no. that's probably is his ideas because of how old fashioned he is. That's true. That's true. It, but but he, he it, it's funny when Jacob says that though. But he, yeah, it is. It I would I would say that. But he, him. he he Edward signs off on it right, and then Bella falls asleep, and they just <laughs> bicker over the top of it. They're in a, <laughs> they're in a tent. It's a small compartment, right? <laughs> and they just bicker over the top of her head. While she supposedly sleeps through the whole thing, right? And then it looks like maybe she grins and she was awake the whole time, but then they didn't really make that for certain, did they? No. I no. don't know if she was meant to be awake listening or not. No, and they just had this like really weird kind of heart to heart about. Yeah, they basically they they it was it was like they were becoming friends but at arm's length because they 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 can't really because they hate each other, but they're like. You know, they both kind of say, oh, well, you know, if it wasn't for her, then... Yeah, maybe we could be friends. But 
they literally have had to sign a truce to not kill each other for yeah, the like, last however many decades. They're like natural enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's the lion falling in love with the lamb. Uh, <laughs> so the wolf has also fell in love with the lamb, and yeah, the lion and the wolf are now pals. Like some weird triangle mm. interspecies <laughs> inappropriate. So next morning. Next morning is when the battle happens, so they didn't need to sleep overnight in the tent. <laughs> yeah, why did that happen? Nothing, nothing happens till the next day. <laughs> like they, I was like, oh, so they just when when it, when I saw it was morning, I was like, wait, so they, we're not going to see the fight? Like they just ah, we weathered the storm, it's all fine now. <laughs> but then they're like, they're coming. Like, well, so why did we just spend all night <laughs> freezing on a mountain? We didn't need to do that. I could have been in your in your bed that you just bought. But, <laughs> okay, right, and. She goes over to Edward and she's like, I'm sorry about last night. And but I'm sorry about nearly dying because you made me sit out in the cold. Yeah. It's, yeah. Why are you apologizing? But she knows it was difficult for him to sit and allow that to happen. He says, yeah, well, it, it won't go down in, in the my list of top 10 evenings, which is a hand up dialogue. It's terrible. And she goes, you have a list? And he says, yeah, I spent all 10 of them with you. So he actually has a list of his top ten evenings. Who does that? Who keeps that? He's been alive for he's been alive for a hundred and nine years, and he has a list of his top ten evenings, and they were all within the last two years. What the fuck has he been doing for hundred and seven years? Yeah, that's really sad. Very. Then he 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 briefly mentions something about well, you know, I can't wait for you to be my wife, Mrs. Cullen, and she's like. Uh, it's it's the modern day. I, I'm going to at least, what did she say? We're going to go double barreled or she says, I'm going to keep my own surname or whatever she says. And then Jacob overhears it and they were trying to keep it from him that they're getting married. Well, Bella was because she didn't want to hurt his feelings or in her, in her, in her words, she wanted him to have a clear head for battle. Right. <laughs> so they, so they, they've, they've kind of, they've outed themselves now. He knows they're getting married and he's like, you're marrying him. And then he just starts running away. <laughs> Because he just runs everywhere he goes. That's one of the things, that's one of his character traits, is he runs everywhere. Not as a wolf, as a human, he just runs everywhere. Yeah, like he leaves her house and just runs down the street home. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, bye, <laughs> down the street. <laughs> so he starts running away, and Bella's like, you knew he was listening, and then she starts chasing after him. And then... This is just inexplicable. I don't understand what happened here at all. <laughs> Definitely the most inexplicable part of the movie. The most insane thing that she does. And She's every... just like, kiss me. I'm asking you to kiss me. So then Jacob starts kissing her, right? They they have like a very romantic kiss on the mountaintops. They kiss on the mountaintops. He leaves. He says, oh, that should have been our first he sa- kiss. He says, that should have been our first kiss. So the first thing he does when they have this romantic kiss is bring up that time that he kissed her without her consent and she punched him in the face. He's like, I remember that, though. <laughs> remember when I forced myself on you? So then he just runs off again. And then she turned around and Edward's just standing there. <laughs> yeah, the she... guy who she accepted the proposal from, like, the night before. But, but the way the, like, camera angles are and stuff, it's not at all clear where he was stood. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you saw. It looks like he was, like, five feet away. Yeah, yeah, but then she goes, oh, you saw. And he goes, No. <laughs> Well, what are you doing? <laughs> no, I looked down for a minute. What happened? She go, he goes. He goes. No, but Jacob thought. Jacob's thoughts are pretty loud. Like, so what is like? What? What? What were his thoughts while he was kissing her? What was he listening to there? <laughs> like, what? What was? What was that? His thoughts are so damn loud. <laughs> so I, do, I just I, I don't get any of it, right? No, and, but and, the, 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 and then she's like, she's like apologizing to Edward, saying like, you know. He's like, I know you love Jacob, and she's she, like, she said, she says, I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yes, you do. You asked him yeah, to do you it. You repeatedly said, "Kiss me." <laughs> then he did. Really, you're the only person who's accountable here. <laughs> and and then she's she, like, I know you love him, and she's like, but I love you more. And he's just like, yes, I know. Yeah, like I that know. makes it okay. Yeah, it was like the fucking Han Solo scene. I love you more. I know. <laughs> he's just like, I know. That's fine. Like he's okay with it. It's like, I know that you love him, but as long as you love me more, then you can make out with that guy. <laughs> what? He's the most jealous man in the world. And suddenly he's like, it's fine that you just kiss that guy. And it's not like he's getting any more than that. 
they haven't even slept together. No, no. So it's, it's like they're just sharing her at this yeah. point. Yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're on equal measure. But he's like, well, I'm going to marry you. So that's like, I, I'm going to win eventually. Right. Very weird, very weird situation. General take from all of those scenes is stop yelling in the mountains. You've literally gone there to hide. Yeah. That Mountain- would echo yes. really far. It would echo so much. That's the deal with Yodeling, right? That's the whole <laughs> point. So then the, the, the war starts, right? The, the army arrives. The war starts. Now, the big, the big deal about it is they weren't expecting the wolves. So they arrive like, we're going to kick your head in. And then the wolves eat them all. And it's just <laughs> dead easy. Just like, it's just written off like that. It's just like 90 seconds of the movie is, oh my God, there's a big battle. Oh no, it's fine because the wolves ate them all. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, they Sorted. just smashed them like vases. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just all, all shattered glass vampires. Yeah. But then Victoria which was the main villain behind it all. Yes, she the sneak- redhead. Yeah, she sneaks off and realises that Edward's not there. She can follow his scent and that's where Bella will be. Which I don't know why she's, they didn't... She says in a, in a like sultry vampire voice, she's like, take me to the big yin. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't think of that because it's so obvious. You even said, well, what, wouldn't they just follow his scent? There? Yeah, wouldn't they just go, well... Edward's not here, and it's his girlfriend we're looking for, so we'll just find him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, all the other vampires are, like, slaughtered by this point, and it's just Victoria and her new boyfriend. Yeah, she, she's they've they've kind of crowbarred this love interest of hers into it just for this scene, I guess. Yeah, so she's, like, controlling this guy, trying to manipulate him into killing them for her because she wants revenge. She's pretending that she's in love with them, but she's not really. Yeah, and basically they, they they find them on the mountain and the way that they get away with it is Edward's just like, she doesn't love you. She doesn't love you. Think about it. She only picked you because you know the area well. Like, I'm sorry, but having a good sense of direction in this rural town <laughs> would not make a difference. These are vampires that track with their nose. Yeah, that's true. Like they needed him to go, no, we've taken a wrong turn. We should have gone left on Elm. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. No. But but he's like, no, you're lying. You're lying. Uh, I'm going to kill you now. What does he say? He, he goes, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> like, that's what you say before he kills me. You're dead. What do you think you would say? Because they do always seem to make a little comment, don't they? Yeah, I think... Depends on the situation. I think... Your first time or your first few times, the adrenaline would be too much for you to actually say anything. Mm-hmm. You'd, you'd be panic doing it. Even if you were like planned it and all that, you'd still be panic pulling the trigger, wouldn't you really? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm assuming I'm assuming them. I don't know why. Because that's my plan. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the situation because like, you know, you'd like to make a pawn if, if possible. I don't think I would. I think I think I would just let my anger get the better of me and just say like, fuck off, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they kill them. Yeah. That's probably what I would say. Yeah, that's probably actually more realistic. You're like pushing them into a fire and saying, things are burning up or something. <laughs> I don't know. You... <laughs> Just start singing Burning Up by Jonas Brothers. You should write a Twilight movie. <laughs> I think I'd be good at it. I think you would. Mm. you got the skills needed. So then it turns out there's one last young blood vampire there, right? And for some reason, they just can't hack it. Like, he's just one too many for them to take on. And he picks... Jacob's a wolf at this point. He picks Jacob up and, like, bear hugs him and breaks all the bones in his body. And then that turns him back into a human. Again, inexplicably, he's just like, now I'm a human because I'm in pain. So they have to, like, take him back to, to like, get him mended, right? So they take him away. And then the Italians arrive. And they're like, ah, you killed them all really well i can't you didn't even need us and then edward's like well if you've been here half an hour ago then you could have done what you 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 could have fulfilled your purpose or whatever Mm -hmm. like but you didn't need them like what is he salty about i don't get it i think it's because he's saying like they knew what was happening and they just let it happen maybe i don't know like they could have sorted it out themselves and the cullens wouldn't have needed to have that little battle i guess so they could have just like either way the whole scene I don't really know. I feel like... You didn't understand what was happening. I. It, it feels like there's some kind of politics in this movie that I'm not getting mm-hmm. with the Italians because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not understanding where that's going. Maybe it'll make more sense in the next ones. But 
the the Italians are mad at them because they didn't kill one of the little girl vampires because they they offered her shelter. They offered her what did you say, refuge or whatever. Yeah. So they they were gonna like take her in and she was gonna be like a vegetarian vampire yeah. with them. In return for her surrender, they offered her refuge and then Dakota Fanning is like, Well that wasn't yours to offer. And I'm like, I don't so then they kill the little girl. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. I don't get it. I don't know what the Italian's problem was. Just because they were like a bit raucous. But they're raucous because they're newborn. That's been covered. All of that's been covered. That's what vampires are like when they're new. That's what it says. Yeah, but maybe it was because there were so many of them and like they were making a scene in Seattle of being, you know, because it's on the news. Just, but now there's just this one girl and she's clearly about 12. Yeah. Anyway, it's... The that whole, was unnecessary. The whole thing doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess it's just showing how like callous they are. Yeah, and then they're like, and and that one's still human, and and Bella, who should not chime in, just stay no, quiet. that's what I thought. You you are so unfathomably out of your depth. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. You're lucky to have got a seat at the table. Right? <laughs> Bella's like a date has been set. Like, firstly, why are you talking like them? Yeah. <laughs> they're all they're all 300 years old. Why are you talking like that? A date has been set. And how is she so confidently talking to these people? Yeah. yeah. These people these people can kill you with their minds. Yeah. And she's just like, um, fucking get off my back, all right? I'm, I'm doing it. God. God. So, already sent out the invites. <laughs> so they're pissed off that they didn't make Bella a, a vampire yet, but she's like, you know, we'll get to it. And then they go, they go back to the reservation where the doctor dad i don't know if we've even discussed that Ed, edward cullen edward cullen's dad but it's not really his dad it's just the family dad is, <laughs> is a doctor and that's how edward became a vampire he was dying of spanish influenza so this vampire doctor doctor vamps uh, <laughs> bit his neck to make sure that he would live forever and then just took him in as a son. Yeah, it's quite weird that he made that decision on his behalf. Isn't yes, it? extremely weird. And surely, well, Maybe I was, was going like... to say surely, but I know that thousands and thousands of people died of Spanish influenza. So why didn't he? Why did he pick Edward Cullen? It's never explained. Yeah, and what did he like whisper to him, like as he was dying, like, "Oh, I'll live forever, kid." <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe. But that's you know, again, not covered. Not covered. None of it's explained. And so they go, they go back, they go back to the reservation because the doctor needs to help heal Jacob, right? They get to the reservation, all of them are shirtless again. I mean, it's like, it's like a Red Hot Chili Peppers tribute band, right? <laughs> They're just constantly shirtless and six packs everywhere. Uh-huh. At this point, they mention for the first time about the werewolves' super fast healing. Yeah. Now, I've seen X Men. I know that Wolverine does that, uh-huh. right? But uh, is that like? Is that standard werewolf law? I don't know. I don't Not know that what... I've ever heard before, but it could be. But you know what she's like? She just writes her own. Yeah. So, so, but, but that's what I mean is like, you have to establish that as a thing. Yeah. You can't just go, oh, by the way. Yeah, it's not B- like... BT with... Dub's three films in. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not like, you know, starting a vampire film and you don't have to explain all the like tropes because everyone knows them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could have easily written a movie about vampires and werewolves and everyone would go, right, okay, so they, people would be going into it like cracking the knuckles like, right, so standard vampire rules, right? Okay, yeah. everybody, know, everybody know the plan? Everybody know the game? Uh, and instead, she blazed her own trail but not explained any of it yeah. for us. But maybe she did in the books, you know? I, I don't know, and maybe you don't remember every word of the, them all. I mean... <laughs> when did the books come out? If the mo- first movie was 2008... Were all the books already out when they started making the movies? I don't think so. No. I don't know. I can't remember. They were like mid 2000s. Oh, okay. Let's find out. So it wasn't that long. While you're looking that up, I'll explain. Dr. Vamps needs to heal Jacob, but he's got super healing, so his bones have started to heal incorrectly. So they have to re break all of his bones. And so he's like screaming and screaming. And then the doctor comes out and he's like, I've given him morphine, but his body temperature will absorb it all or whatever he says. Like, like a vaporizer or something. Yeah, just like it's going to get rid of the morphine anyway. So I'll be back to put him on a drip. And then he looks at Bella and he's like, he's asking for you. As if like like he's excited about that, even though it's his son that she's supposed to be marrying. So he shouldn't be excited about that. Like you, you, your mistress is asking for you in there. <laughs> so she goes in to talk to him. And he quite rightly at this point thinks like, 
thinks they're on. Because the last time he saw her, she said, kiss me, I'm asking you to kiss me. So he thinks, like, we're, we're fair game now, this is it. I won, I beat Cullen. And then she has to explain to him, no, I love him more still, and I'm not going to be with you. But she's like, let's not talk about that right now. Mm-hmm. And he says, and I think this is the only reason they wrote the fucking Bones bit in. He says, no, I'd rather get all of the re-breaking out of the way in one go. Because she needs to re-break his heart. Oh. Like the Dr. Vamps re-broke his bones. Oh, that's sad. No, it's fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the boot, the first one only came out in 2005. And then it was 2006, 2007, 2008. So one a year. So they started so it was like midway. So they started making the movies not knowing what the end was going to be, which is so, just yeah. a terrible idea. But okay. Okay. So they just they they in their minds, in Bella's mind and Cullen's mind, that's just boxed everything off nicely. It's fine that, you know, Jacob will heal eventually and we don't care that he's sad and I'm not bothered that I just kissed him. So then they go back to the field because that's where they go. When things are good, they go and, and lie down in the field. So they go and lie down in the field and talk about marriage, and she's like, we need to do one last thing. It might be very dangerous. And he's like, what? She's like, we need to tell Charlie about the wedding. <laughs> and he's like, very dangerous. Like, shit jokes, man. Shit jokes, very dangerous. Ooh. And uh, and that's it. That's the end of the film. They've got to go and tell Charlie. By the way, still calling him Charlie. Living, she lives with him. She, it's, it's her dad that she lives with and has done now for years. She won't even call him dad. Call him by his first name. Sorry, I'm just reading about another novel that she's written. And I don't understand what it means. The cover looks kind of like a reimagining of uh, the original. It's got like a hand holding an apple. And it says, it's called Life and Death. And then it says Twilight Reimagined. And the description is, there are two sides to every story. You know Bella and Edwards. Now get to know Bo and Edith. When Beaufort, Beaufort, Swan, Beaufort, Swan. I don't know. Moves to the gloomy town of Forks and meets the mysterious, alluring Edith Cullen. His life takes a a thrilling and terrifying turn. Porcelain skin, golden eyes, blah, blah, blah. What he doesn't realise is the clip he gets... Isn't that the 18 by Ed Sheeran? Porcelain skin, It's a reimagining. So it's like, what, she's just written the same story, but slightly changed the characters and maybe set it in the olden days. So it's... She's like switched it around. So, oh, a guy in the olden days moves to Fox and there's a lazy vampire there and they've fallen in love, but he doesn't realise and then... Yeah, so it's the exact same story. Basically. Fucking hell, money-making scheme. Pointless, the reviews. That's what the review says, pointless. I'm not sure why this novel exists other than to make money. (laughs) Maybe they'll make a movie out of that one. Then we can do this again on our third anniversary. Great. My stance on the Twilight Saga so far. We're three movies in. There's two movies left. It's it's not good. The third one was better because it at least had some kind of dilemma for them to address. It had some kind of story, some plot. The first two didn't really. Mm-hmm. A lot of character development in the first two movies. So I'm hoping for the best of, out of the last, the last two. That's what I'm hoping for is that, that they will be the best ones. Kind of the same as the Harry Potter franchise, like I said, it's 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 the later ones were, were better movies, right? That's what I'm hoping for. So thank you to everybody who's listened. This has been episode ninety four of a Hangover You Don't Deserve Podcast. It's been part of our two year anniversary celebration where we are watching and reviewing the movie Twilight for reasons we don't fully understand. And we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming after we've seen all the Twilight movies. So thank you very much for listening. Please remember to follow us on all social media. It's Pod everywhere. And you can send us an email, ahyddpod at gmail.com. Let us know what you think of the Twilight movies. Let us know what you think of our podcast. Let us know what you think about Hangovers. And find us on Patreon if you want to support the show. Patreon.com slash ahyddpod. You can chuck us a little, little bit of money each month and get digital and physical exclusives in return. And fuck you, Jared Spear. Fuck you. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. Thank you for listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast.